All right, join us now after their big win for Red Scare. Ryan Mikesell, Trey Landers, Ryan McMahon. Congratulations on the big win. My first question is for Ryan M. Ryan, talk a little bit about what's it, what it's been like to uh, – <laughs> That's who I am. That's like the oh. Spider-Man. <laughs> True. All right. First question is for Ryan McMahon. All right. What's it been like to play with these Dayton guys? Have you been accepted? What's the deal with that? Yeah, I mean, they've accepted me with open arms. They're really – you know, I was worried just because I didn't know um, too much about any of them and how they played. But just based on the first practice, I could tell that they were really unselfish guys. And um, they liked having me on the court with them. So, it's been a lot of fun playing with them. They're good dudes on and off the court. So it's been a lot of fun. Uh, my first question is for Trey. Uh, Trey, why didn't you just do that whole dunk play at the beginning of the yellow ending instead of waiting until uh, the end? Uh, I mean, honestly, it, it, just, it just came with the flow. I had a couple tip dunks. So like I said, my legs was feeling good. But uh, Demo got the rebound. I seen everybody from uh, House of Pain going to the glass. I just took off. So I know Demo had seen me. And he, he, uh, he hit me on the pass, and after that, it was. History. I knew I was going to take off and dunk it. So I seen Hill chasing me down, but I had him by a couple steps, so it was over after that. When we talked with uh, Ryan Mike Sell before the before the tournament, he mentioned that he's kind of looking at this a little bit like redemption because of how, of course, the college basketball season ended. ended. Just curious what all your guys' thoughts are on, on that statement. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, all, all the good teams, even the teams that – Barely made it in the tournament. I'm sure they all felt like they had a chance to win it. Um, I mean, Louisville was a one seed. We were going to, at one point in the year, we were going to be a, I don't know, three, anywhere between a three and a five seed. We felt like we had a really good chance of making a run. Um, redemption would be a good word, but I'm just excited to be competing again. I miss competing at a high level against good players. So I'm excited to be out there on the floor. I feel blessed um, to be around good guys out there as well, just the same way I was at Louisville. Uh, fellas, a lot of the uh, alumni teams are, are winning these games uh, in the tournament. Obviously, in TBT, you got teams that are playing for a cause. They're a group of pros that are friends, and then there's alumni teams. Do you think that this year, being that it's in the bubble, there's a smaller field, less practice time, alumni teams have an advantage? I would say an advantage. I mean, I think my biggest thing is I see a lot of these teams, they have a lot of superstars, um, which kind of affects the way people play. What else we have guys that – score guys and rebound guys and defend we, we have a balanced team you know a lot of guys want to get the ball and go one-on-one -on -one and go score you know so I think our biggest thing that we have is very important for us that we can balance the floor like as far as we have guys that can do everything you know so I think that's really big for us and as far as this tournament you know if you got guys that just want to go one-on-one -on -one all the time it's not really going to help you know so obviously like what well, doesn't being balanced it helps us a lot. Fran Fraschillo said it best he said the dominator was not dominating and that's <laughs> in mostly in part to Trey and Ryan, you helped out a little bit on uh, the Dominator as well. Just curious what uh, <laughs> what coach's game plan was going into it for Mike Dom. No, I mean, uh, yeah, going into it, obviously everybody was talking about him. He's a great player. Uh, obviously, you saw what he did the first two games. Even today, he made some really tough shots. But uh, we knew going into it, we challenged Trey Landers. And, um, you know, he's the type of guy I've never seen back down from a challenge. And, you know, he just did his thing tonight. He goes out there, defends the best player he is. Um, no fear. He goes out there, plays as hard as every game. So uh, you got to give credit to him. And then, um, you know, obviously, Joey, we had a good game plan going up and, and making it tough for him. Yeah, can we give some more love to uh, head coach, former walk-on Joey Gruden, please? Yeah, for sure. He, he did a great job. We did, you know, he watched the game multiple times. He, he was looking at highlights of, you know, college highlights, you know, guys from overseas playing. So, um, you know, he did his preparation. I mean, yeah, like he said, he did his preparation and people might, you know, look at the end of the game and think that was on him. It was really 100% on us. Yeah. I mean, we were the ones that took our foot off the gas. He warned us not to. Um, you know, people are going to always criticize the coach in a situation like that, but a lot of times it's on the players. So we let them know it was on us. Yeah, for sure. And a big thing I was to that I realized with Joey today, um, when we kind of got the Elon meeting, Things got to go sideways. They started scoring when we were running. Like, he did a good job of kind of just telling us to relax. Yeah. You know, kind of calm us down. We were getting a little happy. We were, I think we were, like, one point away. I think T-Tom hit a free throw. We was, like, at 81 points. You know, he just told us, like, guys, like, relax. You know, I think that kind of just helped us. We were like, okay, let's get a couple stops. Let's get out of the run. I mean, we've been doing all day. You know, that kind of helped us. But I gave him a lot of credit because for him being in this thing the first time, you know, he didn't really panic. You know, a lot of guys in the whole thing fire. Like, let's just let him play. You know, he kind of helped us regroup and put us back together so we can get the credit. 
my uh, my last question. So we didn't interview anyone from the Golden Eagles before the tournament started, but we did interview Ryan. How much of an advantage do you think that is going into the uh, semifinal game? Well, it's worked the last the last two games for us, so uh, I think it gives us a little advantage. Now. Okay. Those guys are those guys are really good. We we watched you know the first two games. Those guys are studs. They got really good guard play, physical down in the post. So we're gonna we're gonna be uh, you know it'll be a tough tough matchup, but. Um, you know, I think you would do a good job getting us ready. And then my last question, um, I started with Trey. I'm going to end with Trey. Trey, did you ever see Andrew's text messages when we were trying to interview you before? No, nah, I mean, I, would you hit me up on, like, my phone or, like, social media? No, no, no. We texted you in a group chat with Ryan Mike Sell, and, and he responded. I shouldn't say Andrew texted you. If I looked so. at my phone, told you how many other messages I had, you probably wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Okay. No, good answer. Just, just for Andrew's sake, he was afraid to ask you, but it I worked out. It worked out great because we developed an amazing relationship with Ryan, and it's clearly paid his dividends and good karma for the whole team. <laughs> my bad. My bad. You know, it's my been bad. good so far, so you know let's rock with it. My bad. You're good. Just, just play well, win the next game, and and we'll see you right here again in a couple of days. Yes, yes. sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Congrats, fellas.